Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to our Resurrection Sunday worship service at Lee Chapel. We're certainly glad to have you worshiping with us online this morning. We know that this, again, is not the way we want to celebrate Easter and Resurrection Sunday, but we are able to do it virtually and online. So I praise God again for your ability to tune in with us via our Facebook page. Once again, this is the day the Lord has made, and we shall still rejoice and be glad in it. You see our order of worship there on the screen, which will be our call to worship, followed by the preface to the Decalogue, the summary of the Decalogue, the Apostles' Creed, and the prayer. And so let us join in now with our call to worship. We gather, we are a community of faith who know that the glory of God as witnessed through the resurrection is not bound by space or limited to any time. We gather in separate spaces, but centered on one story. We are a people of resurrection, celebrating the gift of a risen savior. We celebrate acknowledging the difficulty of separation and uncertainty, but believing in the unfolding of new connections, new hopes, and new possibilities. We celebrate knowing the pain of a hard Friday, experiencing the grief of an uncertain Saturday, but believing in the joy of a resurrection morning. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us lean into our, our joy and celebrate with gladness. We receive the gift of the resurrection. Hallelujah. Jesus has risen. He has overcome death that we might know that death does not have the final word. We live into the truth of the resurrection. Today we gather. Today we celebrate. We live into hope even beyond what we can see. We will be healing where brokenness has seemed to prevail and love where hate seems to remain. Jesus is risen. Wherever we are, we are still together. We participate in the joy, peace, hope, justice, and relationship that Jesus reminds us is ours. We choose to live into the call of our resurrected Savior, even when it is hard to do. We declare, Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. Let us recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and His Son Jesus Christ, only Lord and Savior, who was It's now time for our prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we certainly come on this resurrection morning thanking you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. Thanking you, God, for 
blessing us on this resurrection morning. We thank you, Lord, for watching over us last night as we slept. We thank you, God, for all that you've done for us. We thank you especially, God, for your son, Jesus the Christ, who lives and reigns in our lives forever. We thank you, God, for watching over us and blessing us this morning. We pray, God, that you will continue to bless us throughout our worship experience this morning. This is our prayer in your son, Jesus the Christ's name. Amen. Good morning again. Now, I know we're working through some technical difficulties here, but please bear with us. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, and I invite you to join in with us as we read the Old Testament scripture. Isaiah 25, verses 6 through through nine. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. He will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheep that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Amen. Our New Testament scripture comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. And I invite you again to join in with us as we prepare to read. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Now we have tried to put together a special greeting for you. We know that uh, around this time of the year we have persons giving Easter speeches and our children use performing. And so as you know, we sent a request for everyone to send in their Easter greetings. And so I want to thank uh, Lady Leah Love for putting together this video, and now we're going to have our special Easter greetings. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the Lee Chapel family, we want to wish you a wonderful and happy Resurrection Day. Stay safe. God bless. Good Resurrection morning, Lee Chapel family and friends. We're greeting you in the joy of the risen Lord Jesus. And even though the configuration of our worship has been altered physically, it can never and should never be altered spiritually. We worship the God who has led us closer to him even through uh, this challenging season. Good morning again, Lee Chapel. I really wish that you could hear the chimes in the, in the background, in the wind, because it reminds us 
that our Lord is still moving even in this situation and we are certainly grateful looking forward to being with you very soon God bless you all and we are wishing all of you a very holy healthy and holistic Easter and may the Lamb of Calvary provide you with peace prosperity and protection in the coming days God Amen. bless you to our Lee Chapel family, we love you, we miss you, be safe, happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day, one mile time. And Leah, happy Easter. From Chicago to the Lee Chapel family, I wish you a very happy Easter. And we can say this proudly because we know our Savior lives. Jesus, Jesus is good. Jesus is great. He died on the cross for us all of our faith. He rose from the dead on Easter Sunday. He loves us. He loves us so much. He gave us this Sunday. Happy Easter. Love, friends. Love, Sharon and Braylon. Happy Easter from Cora and Ronald Lyons. Happy Easter. May this glorious day bring you blessings of good health, love, joy, peace, and hope from Tracy Bradford. Wishing you love, joy, and peace. Happy Easter. God bless. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Be blessed, be safe, and stay healthy. Easter greetings from the Ligon and Brown families. Happy, Happy Easter! Easter. To all of my brothers and sisters in Christ, I just want to wish you a happy Resurrection Day because the sting of death is gone. So use this day to celebrate what Christ has done for you. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying healthy. I love you. I miss you. And I can't wait to see you again. Happy Easter from Olivia and Charlotte. Happy Easter, Lee Chapel family from Shawtel, Dusty, and the rest of the family. We love you. We miss you loads. Hi everybody, it's the Statham family. Wish we could all be together to celebrate Easter, but since we can, everybody stay safe. But from all of us, Happy, happy Easter. Easter! Have a very, very happy Easter. Have a happy Resurrection Sunday. May you guys stay safe at home and enjoy worship and enjoy the day that the Lord has given us. Hi, we're really missing everybody. Pastor Love, Lady Love, and the Lee Chapel family. Happy Easter from Sister Norma, Kyla, and Christian. Greetings from Linda and Marvin Spears. We miss our church family dearly, but happy Easter to all of you. Happy Easter from the Culps. Say your speech. He rose. Say your speech. He has risen. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Happy Easter to our Lee Chapel family. From Michael and Yvonne Lee. Happy Easter from Clara Lee. Happy Easter, everyone, from the McKinney family. Good morning, Lee Chapel family. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From our family to yours, we would like to wish you a happy Resurrection Sunday. God bless. Happy Easter, everyone. From Reverend Cedric and First Lady Patricia Bailey. Bailey. God bless you, and may we all find Jesus in our hearts. For as Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, he is no longer in our presence. 
but we may find him if we seek. Happy Resurrection Sunday, everyone, from First P. Romami Church. Happy Easter, Lee Chapel. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Love from the Davis family. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day to the Lee Chapel and me family and Pastor Love and Lady Love from Ursa. The drivers are breaking the six foot rule just for you, Lee Chapel. We wish we could be with you. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter! This is Catherine Driver. Wish we could all be together this Easter Sunday. May God bless you. Happy Easter. May the Holy Spirit fill your Easter with love, hope, and peace. We miss you, Lee Chapel family, and love you much. The Clarks. Good morning. Happy Easter Sunday, Lee Chapel. Sending greetings from Jimmy, Marva, and Vincent Bradford. Have a wonderful, blessed Easter Sunday. Hi, Lee Chapel. Happy Easter. From our family to yours. Happy Easter. Good evening, Lee Chapel. Wanted to say greetings from the Smith family. Hope you're doing well. And we wanted to wish you and all a very happy Easter. Take care. This Easter, let everything you do be done with love. Christ is risen, welcoming a season of warmth and hope. Hallelujah. And let the beauty of the Lord be upon us. Happy Easter from the Chris Crew. The real meaning of Easter is to stuff it in a love story. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Happy Easter. Have a blessed Resurrection Day. Happy Easter. Roll Tide. Happy Easter from Sherilyn and Zeus. We hope that you all are staying safe and that at least one of us can see you soon. Happy Easter. Say Happy Easter, Zeus. <laughs> Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Resurrection Sunday, Lee Chapel family. And our mini. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Easter to my Lee Chapel family from Carolyn Robertson. So loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. So be prayerful, be careful, but not fearful. Happy Easter, everybody. Chapel, we love you, we miss you. Happy Easter, and we cannot wait till we can be together again. We know that being apart physically has been a strain on all of us, but we're here to celebrate Jesus' Resurrection Sunday and know that His grace and His love abides in all of our lives. So let us be excited about worship this morning and let us continue to praise God for all that He does in our lives and look forward to the Sunday when we can all be back together physically. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I hope you really enjoyed those Easter Resurrection Sunday morning greetings from so many people who care and love about you. Uh, this was one of our ways to try to make this really feel like we were together again. And so we really appreciate everyone sending those in. Now next, we're going to have a musical selection from our choir. This was previously recorded and we found a way to insert this into our uh, live feed this morning. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, song selection from our choir, after which I'll be back for my sermon.
Well, I really hope you enjoyed that selection from our choir. It reminds us of the power of the love of Jesus and uh, the power of God moving in our lives and the availability for salvation for all of us. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So now it's come time for our Resurrection Sunday sermon. I want to direct your attention to a scripture found in the book of Romans, chapter number 6, verses 3 through 11. Romans, chapter 6, verses 3 through 11. I want to give you some time to turn there with us. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. That's again, Romans, chapter 6, verses 3 through 11. Let us hear the word of the Lord. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died in Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. May the Lord bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Let us pray. Gracious God, once again, we thank you for the chance to come and to celebrate on this Sunday the resurrection of your son, Jesus the Christ. God, bless the words that goes forth that lives may be changed and transformed. God, allow your word to permeate our hearts and minds to allow God us to be healed from any brokenness and found God to be walking in the way you'd have us to walk. This will God is our prayer in your son, Jesus, the Christ's name, amen. So this morning we want to look at, again, Romans chapter six, verses three through 11, and look at a theme for this morning's sermon, blessings of a new beginning. Blessings of a new beginning. On this Sunday, we join Christians all over the world in celebration of the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. We celebrate that after he died for our sins, he was able to raise himself from the dead state that he was in. Death was unable to keep him, and he is indeed alive again. And we celebrate that. Paul understood, though, that what the resurrection of Jesus represents to believers is a new life. And Paul gives us some insight into the blessings of a new beginning for each of us. Paul gives us three things to remember as we talk about the blessings of a new beginning. The first blessing is this. Jesus' death gives us new life. Jesus' death gives us new life. In order to fully appreciate the resurrection of Jesus, we cannot ignore his death. Keep in mind that the actions of Adam and Eve put humanity in an awful position, caused us to all be subject to the curse of not just physical death, but also no possibility of life after death. It didn't matter how good men and women were, at some point in their lives, they would all give in to their own desires and take a path of unrighteousness. They didn't have to stay on that path long. Just simply committing one act of sin triggered that curse of physical death. All of us were doomed to repeat the actions of Adam and Eve. It was part of our DNA because Adam and Eve sinned against God and put that thing called sin into action into this world. But out of his love for his creation and a desire to reconcile us back to himself, God took on human flesh and God lived among us and God had one mission to complete. And that was to pay the price of sin for the whole world and die so that we could live. We could not escape the penalty of sin unless someone else paid the price. No matter how good we were, no matter how good our parents were, no matter how good our children were, our aunts and uncles, all of us at some point would fail in keeping our commitment and obedience to God. But God wrapped himself 
in human flesh, lived among us as a human being to show us how to worship God, but also to die for the sins of all humanity. The death of Jesus gives us the chance for new life as our sins were crucified with him. Can you imagine the love of God? So much love. The love of God. So much love that God would take upon himself our human flesh, but more than that, our sins. Think about that. God's love moved him so much, not just to die for the sins of those who had lived and died before he came upon the earth, not just to die for the sins of those who were living as he was on the earth, but also to die for the sins of those who had not yet been born. That's us. We were those who had not yet been born when Jesus was alive and walking on earth, and yet God still chose to die for us and for the sins that we had not yet committed. Think about that. Think about how vast and how deep and how wide and how strong God's love must have been that he said he was going to even die for the sins of the world that had not yet been born. That's powerful, but that's also the good news. Because what that says to us is that God was thinking about us before we were even born. That God had us on his mind even before we were in our parents' womb. That God said he was going to even die for sins that we had not yet committed, for sins that we had not yet repented of, for sins that we had not even thought of. God loved us so much that he was going to die for sins that were not yet completed. And I don't want you to miss that point. Jesus died for the sins of those who are not yet born. But because of his death for our sins, we all get the chance at a new life because our old life had been buried with Jesus. Our old sins had been crucified with Jesus and our old ways had been cast aside and we had a new lease on life. That's good news, everybody. That's good news. What it says is whatever kind of life you were living before you found out who Jesus was, whatever kind of things you were doing before you found out that Jesus made available uh, salvation for you, you now can cast all that aside. You can now put all that away. All your sins, all of my sins, all of my old ways were crucified and buried and cast away with Jesus' death. And that's the beauty of it. Today can be your transformation and change day. Today can be my transformation and change day. And so we celebrate that Jesus died so that he could erase our past and give us a fresh start. We celebrate because the death of Jesus gives us new life. We cannot talk about the resurrection until we talk about the death. We cannot talk about new possibilities until we talk about the old ways of ours that are cast aside and gone away. Keep this in mind. God doesn't want any of us to suffer. God doesn't want any of us to be in bad positions. And we see how far God is willing to go to keep us from going down those paths. I'm glad this morning that Jesus died for my sins. I'm glad this morning that Jesus crucified my sins to the cross. I'm glad this morning that my life, my old life was buried with Jesus and that when he was resurrected, my new life was resurrected. with. I'm glad and I hope you're glad also. I hope you will celebrate that God gave you a new lease on life when he got up out the grave on Sunday morning. I hope you celebrate that your sins and my sins and your old ways and my old ways were crucified with the cross of Jesus. I want you to celebrate that because I want you to understand that the death of Jesus gives us a new life. And that's one of the blessings of a new beginning is that we have a new life through the death of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So the second thing that Paul reminds us of is this. The death of Jesus also freed us from dying to sin. Jesus' death freed us from dying to sin. The second thing that Jesus did was freed us from the bondage of sin. And it may not seem like it, but sinning is bondage and not freedom. Sinning is bondage and not freedom. Now, I know that when Satan presents temptations to us, it oftentimes seems like it's freedom. It seems like it's a good thing. It seems like that it is something that's going to make us feel good, but there's always strings attached. Remember again, Adam and Eve. God created Adam. God created Eve. He created this wonderful garden of Eden. He created this earth. And he said to Adam and Eve, you can do anything you want to in this garden except for one thing. You cannot eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Think about that. God said you can do whatever you want to do. 
You can do whatever you want to do except for one thing. They only had one thing not to do. And then here comes Satan. And Satan presents to them a temptation. Satan says to Adam and Eve, if you eat of this tree, you'll be free. If you eat of this fruit, you will have the freedom to know what good and evil is like. You will be as powerful as God. And notice the same way that he tempted them is the same way that he tempts us. He oftentimes tempts us with freedoms that are really sins and are really put us in bondage. Notice what happens next, that Adam and Eve commit the sin, they eat of their fruit, and the next thing they do is they start to blame each other for what they did. When God shows up and asks Adam where they are, he and Eve are hiding. And then God says, why are you hiding? And they say, because we're naked. He said, well, who told you we're naked? And immediately Adam says, what? Eve did it. She gave me the fruit. Immediately he stopped taking blame for what he had done. Immediately he stopped being responsible for what he had done. And notice how he compounds the sin of eating the fruit. He then begins to lie and to cast blame on somebody else. Notice now how that freedom becomes bondage. In all of our lives, we will all be tempted with something that God doesn't want us to do, but Satan will present to us as if it's going to give us freedom. Maybe it's responding to somebody negatively because they spoke to you negatively. Maybe it is uh, stealing because you don't have the money to purchase something and you, you want to have the thing right now. Maybe it's uh, engaging in an, an adulterous affair because you think that it's, it's going to make you feel good, but that's not what God wants us to do. Maybe it's killing somebody because you're angry at them, or maybe it's hitting somebody because you've had a bad day at work. All those activities will make us think that it's freedom, but it's really bondage. Satan wants to bind us. He wants to have us in bondage and he doesn't want us to be free. But Jesus came to die so that we could be free from the bondage of sin. Jesus came to die to free us from the bondage of sin. And the word of God says to us that if we look at the death of Jesus the right way, we will see that it frees us from being enslaved to sin and it gives us the freedom to do the right thing and to be truthful and to live the way that God wants us to live. That's the blessing of a new beginning. We don't have to die and be in bondage to sin. And I praise God this morning that God gives us the freedom to live truthfully, that God gives us the freedom to live the way he wants us to live. I praise God this morning for the good news that we are free from the bondage of sin. Jesus was a sin-free man that took on the sins of the whole world, did not take on just any sin, but took on all sin, the whole range of sin. He took on every sin that everybody would ever commit in this world on his soul, and he died for our sins to free us from the bondage of sin, because in his death we are free. And the Bible says that whoever the Christ Jesus has freed is free indeed. And so we celebrate this morning, again, the resurrection of Jesus, but we celebrate in that resurrection freedom from sin. I want you to praise God this morning. I want you to thank the Lord this morning that you are no longer have to be bound to sin, that you're no longer enslaved to sin. I want you to thank God this morning for the fact that he gives you the power to overcome temptation. He gives you the power to resist temptation. He gives you the power to live the life that God calls you to live. Because the truth of the matter is this, sin is not freedom. Though it presents itself as freedom, it's not freedom. It'll have you in bondage. But thanks be to God that Jesus the Christ, the son of Mary and Joseph, the son of the living God, that Jesus the Christ came onto this earth and he walked among us and he lived a perfect life before God, not for his own benefit, for, but for our benefit, that he walked among us and he was treated wrong and he was spat upon and he was whipped and he bled and he died, but he got up again because he wanted to free us from the bondage of sin. And I praise God this morning for that. I thank God for that freedom. I celebrate God this morning and I thank him for what he has done in freeing us from the bondage of sin. And Jesus has given that freedom to us also. He empowers us to also be free from the bondage of sin. And he wants us to think about that every time that temptation comes to us, that it's not freedom, it's bondage. It's not freedom, it's going to be bondage. It's not going to be good all the way. It's going to have strings attached to it. And I guarantee you that when you do the things that God wants you to do, you'll find more freedom in that than in what Satan wants you to do. And that's the blessing also of a new beginning, that Jesus' death frees us from the enslavement and dying to sin. Finally, 
Jesus' resurrection gives us power to live for God. Jesus' resurrection gives us power to live for God. Notice what verse number 11 says. It says this, So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. That's very important. That's very powerful. The final benefit is that we have the power to live for God. Here's the truth of the matter. Doing the right thing is not always easy. Doing the correct thing is not always as simple as just saying you're going to do it. It takes effort. It takes habits being formed. It takes old habits being thrown away and new habits being picked up. It's like any routine that we would go through. We must keep doing it over and over and over again in order for us to be able to do them consistently. And so think about this. When we're making decisions about putting others before ourselves, it doesn't happen overnight, but it comes along when we do it over and over again, and God will empower us to do those things. Trusting God to take care of a situation and leaving it up to him is not always easy. But as we keep doing it over and over again, over time it becomes easier to trust God and not take matters into our own hands. Jesus, through his resurrection, gives us power to live for God. And that's good news, is that in the resurrection, Jesus gives us the power we need to do what God has called us to do. The resurrection of Jesus sends a clear message to us that there is no greater power in the universe than God. Think about that. Here is Jesus, God in the flesh, living among us, taking on the sins of the whole world. And then he's crucified, dead, and buried. And then three days later, he's resurrected. That shows us that God has the power to do what we can't do for ourselves, which is to create a new lease on life for us. God was resurrecting Jesus to show us that we have the power to live for God. If we have in our hearts the hope of being with Christ, what a transforming influence that hope should exercise upon our lives. We should yield ourselves to God as those who are alive from the dead and our bodies should be used as instruments of righteousness to God. And when we do that, the risen life of Christ comes into our lives and becomes part of us. And then our lives into his life and they become intertwined. Think about that again. As I said, when we live for God, the risen life of Christ comes into our lives and it empowers us and our life becomes part of his life and his resurrected power becomes our power. His life becomes our life and we are both then living for God. That is the good news is that we have the power to live for God. We have the power to resist temptation. We have the power to wake up every morning asking God, Lord, what would you have for me to do today? We have the power to say, God, what challenges would you want me to face today? We have the power to say, God, I am confident that whatever comes my way with your power inside of me, I can do everything, God, that you've called me to do. It is not our power. It is God's power. It is the power of the Holy Spirit living and, and then breathing and reigning in our lives. And that is a wonderful thing. That's the good news is that it's not just you facing the world, but it's the power of God moving inside of you. It is the power of God controlling all of your actions. It is the power of God motivating you. And that's the good news this morning. I want you to celebrate with me this morning that the resurrected Jesus is living inside of you. I want you to celebrate with me this morning that God's power is reigning inside of you. I want you to celebrate with, with me this morning that God is inside of you and God God will empower you to do great and wonderful things. Don't let Satan convince you that you don't have any power. He's defeated. He was defeated over 2,000 years ago. God's just letting him hang around for a little while, but soon after he'll be defeated forever. But right now, you got the power of the risen Christ inside of you. I don't want you to celebrate that. I want you this morning to say thank you, God, for sending the power of Jesus into my life. I want you to say hallelujah to God this morning for God's reigning power in your life. I want you to thank God this morning because you are indeed more than a conqueror. I want you to thank God this morning because if God is for you 
and the world be against you, it doesn't matter because God is stronger than the world because greater is he that is in you than all the world. I want you to celebrate. I want you to give God praise this morning for the fact that the resurrected Jesus is inside of you. He is, he is living and he is inside of you and he will empower you to do great and wonderful things for the kingdom of God. I want you to be happy this morning about the fact that you have a new lease on life. I want you to celebrate. I want you to smile. I want you to laugh. I want you to enjoy life because God died not for you to be gloomy. God died not for you to be sad. God died not for you to have your head down, but God died for you to have your chin lifted up. God died for you to have your shoulders pushed back. God died for you to have confidence and, and, and live the way that God wants you to live. Do not let Satan destroy your joy. Do not let him destroy God's love inside of you. Celebrate with me this morning that we serve a risen Savior. Celebrate with me this morning that because he lives, you can indeed face tomorrow. Celebrate with me this morning that because he lives, all fear is gone and you know that God loves you. I want you to get that deep down in your soul because this is the power of the resurrection and this is the blessing of a new beginning that God has blessed you. God has made you. Don't ever forget that, that God made you. God created you. God breathed his life inside of you and God died so you could have a wonderful life, not just now, but in the hereafter. He wants you to have eternal life with him also, but God also didn't leave us by ourselves when he ascended to heaven. He sent the Holy Spirit to empower us. He sent the Holy Spirit to reign in our lives. He sent the Holy Spirit to cover our lives and to watch over our houses. He sent the Holy Spirit to give us power beyond what we have right now. I praise God this morning for the fact that the Holy Spirit reigns in your life because some of the things you've done, you wouldn't have done under your own power. Some of the good things you've done, you wouldn't have done under your own power. Some of the things that I've done, it is only because God's Holy Spirit has been empowering me to do. And so we pray Praise God this morning for the Holy Spirit in our lives. Give God some praise this morning for God's Holy Spirit in your life. Give God some praise this morning for the fact that you have a new lease on life. I want you to take this day as the first day of your new life. I don't know how long you've been walking down this path. I don't know what you've been dealing with. I don't know what bad news you may have gotten, but I guarantee you this morning that the resurrected Jesus gives you the power to overcome those problems and we celebrate God this morning. We praise God. God this morning. We thank the Lord this morning for the fact of the resurrection. And don't you fool yourself. Satan's going to come and try to steal your joy. But I want you to tell Satan when he comes try to steal your joy, you can't steal my joy because this joy that's inside of me, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. This joy I have inside of me, it comes from God. It comes from Jesus. It comes from my mind being convinced and my soul being convicted that God died for my sins. And you can't have my joy. You cannot scare me. You cannot push me back. But God be on my side. I will overcome all obstacles and so will you. And we praise God this morning for that. Hey, we thank God this morning. I don't know about you, but I feel good about the fact that this morning my eyes opened. I feel good about the fact this morning that I knew who I was. I feel good about the fact this morning that I came to church and praise God. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that Jesus died for my sins. I'm glad that he hung on the cross. I'm glad that he was buried, but it didn't stop there because I'm glad that on the third day he rose from the dead. I'm glad that he rose with all power in his hand. I'm glad that he has empowered me and I'm glad he's empowered you. I want you to praise God this morning for the fact that God is on your side. You have nothing to fear. You have no reason to be afraid. You have no reason to doubt yourself. God made you and God don't make no junk. God made you. God loves you. God wants you to be your very best. Just keep trusting God. Don't lean into your own understanding, but lean unto God and God will direct your path. Trust God and in all your ways acknowledge him. And I guarantee you, God will bless your life. Can somebody give God some praise this morning? Can somebody say amen this morning? Amen. Can somebody say hallelujah this morning? Can somebody say thank you God this morning? Can somebody praise God this morning for what God has done and is doing in your life? Can somebody thank the Lord this morning for this Resurrection Sunday, this Sunday that God gave us that we weren't guaranteed to see. I'm glad I saw this morning. I'm glad that, oh, God opened my eyes this morning. It may be raining on the outside, but it's not raining on the inside of my soul. God has the sunshine inside of my heart, and he has also inside of your heart. Praise God with me this morning and thank the Lord for what he is doing in your life. Again, God is for us always, and the blessings of a new beginning 
will always be ours. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer. We want to certainly take this moment. Uh, there may be somebody out there who's listening uh, who maybe didn't know that, that Jesus died for their sins. Or maybe you're going through something difficult right now and you're having trouble still focusing on the love of God in your life. Uh, we want to give you this opportunity to, to come to God, to give God your hand, to thank the Lord for what he's done for you. You don't have to come down to the church. You can give God your hand right now. You can pray right now and God will indeed deliver you. I guarantee you that. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. And in that same power, I want you to pause with me now as we pray and open the doors of the church and give you a chance to give your life to God or to come down in your own house or in your own apartment, or in your car, or where you are, and pause for a moment and let God speak to your life. Father God, we thank you so much, Lord, for what you've done for us. We praise your name, God, for how you have indeed blessed us, how you have done amazing things in our life. God, there are those out there who may not know you in the parting of their sins. There are those, oh God, who are having difficulty right now. Maybe somebody got some bad news from the doctor last week, from the banker last week, God, from their landlord last week, from somebody last week, God. We ask you now, Lord, to move in their life. Move in such a powerful way, oh God, that they will indeed know that it is you. Bless them now, Lord, as I prayer. Continue to fill them with your Holy Spirit. Continue, God, to move in a way that they will be different after you touch them. Bless and now God's our prayer in your son, Jesus, the Christ's name. Amen. All right. Well, we are going to continue with our order of worship as we have next our celebration of birthdays and anniversaries. Happy Resurrection Sunday, Lee Chapel family. It's now time for birthdays and anniversaries. We do not have any anniversaries this week, but we do have a few birthdays, beginning with today, April the 12th, Miss Carolyn Love. We also have Miss Terry Cunningham, April the 15th, Mr. Leland Statham, April the 16th, Miss Brittany Hayes, April the 18th, and Miss Lillian Blackshire P., April the 18th. And while we can't visit with our members today, we encourage you to send a text, make a phone call, or send an email wishing them a happy, happy birthday. Again, happy birthday. Again, happy birthday to all those whose names were called. Uh, we certainly want you to keep in mind that we will again have our Tuesday prayer call and our Wednesday Bible study and our Thursday prayer call this week. Uh, we pray God's blessings upon you and that God continue to bless you throughout this week. Uh, we continue to pray for those who are uh, our health care professionals out there on the front lines working to keep our cities and our, and our state and our nation safe. We want to pray for those who have uh, been in bereavement this week because they've had loved ones to transition. We want to pray for those who are in hospitals and recovering. We want to thank the Lord for being able to, to restore their lives and give them strength. Amen? And so we want to prepare to dismiss this morning, uh, but I want to also prepare for our benediction and remind you of because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Amen. May God bless you and keep you this week. Our prayers are with you. Walk in the power of your new beginning. <laughs>